The Bible says we are created in God's image. If it is true, then we should serve the Lord with gladness. We should use our talents in worship and care for our children and youth. We should bless our neighbor and make disciples from all nations. We should share the light of Jesus' love like a city set on a hill. At Third Baptist Church, we support the arts. We treat people like family, and we see our city as beautiful. Welcome to Third Baptist Church. You are a treasured part of the family of God. Welcome to worship at Third Baptist. A theme running through this morning's worship is the idea of leading. And so you will see that idea of Jesus and God leading his people uh, throughout their lives. And it is highly appropriate, of course, for the season of Lent. And you will hear one of these uh, wonderful poems that has been written for us by Tony Silvestri. And um, we're going to carry on hearing some of his <coughs> poems during Lent and all the way up to Good Friday when we'll have two special poems that evening. That's an evening meditation at seven o'clock on Good Friday. But that's looking a long way ahead. Let's begin our worship with March, the installment for March that Sasha Johnson Manning wrote for us some years ago, and so I'll ask Lansin to begin with that piano prelude.
Good morning, Bert. Good morning. We welcome you um, online and in the, in the sanctuary here. After I finish my prayer, uh, I welcome everyone to reach out to one another in the passing of peace and uh, try to find someone you don't know and those that we do know because they too might be going through something. Let's go to prayer. Lord, we give you thanks for this day. There's so much going on in our world. So we ask a healing hand to be set upon us all and that we have better insight and understanding of what peace, joy, and love is through you. And we ask insight when we look to our left and to our right, to our brothers and sisters in Christ, that we get a glimpse of who you are. We lift you up in this hour of worship and praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Each month during 2024, the poet Charles Anthony Silvestri is writing a sonnet, a holy sonnet for Third Baptist Church. This one, evoking the Easter season, is for the month of March. 
The three men hang together side by side on their crosses on a lonely hill. The one speaks up intending to deride, oh, save yourself and us just by your will. The other chided, have you no respect? Even in the face of death, no fear of God? O oh Lord, remember me among the elect. And Jesus turned and answered with a nod. The honest thief was taken in surprise when Jesus spoke to him these words of love. This day you'll be with me in paradise and gazed with holy eyes to heaven above. May we, like him, be bold to ask our way, if even to the final hour delay. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are grateful that you have brought us before your presence this morning, and we want to thank you for the entire week, the week of blessing and the week of healing. We thank you so much, O oh God. What shall we render for all that you've done for us? We will lift up the cup of salvation, and O oh God, this morning we acknowledge that all the gifts that we have come from you, and we bring them back to you, knowing that you will with, with thousandfold re, replenish uh, us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for offering your son again. And we ask, oh God, that you will pour your spirit up on this church, Lord. We know we are going through a lot. And so we ask for the help because you said when we ask, you will give us. And Lord God Almighty, we ask that those who are in the hospitals, that you will stretch forth your healing hand and Heal them in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask because in the beginning it was not so. In the beginning you called everything and you called them good. And so we ask in the name of Jesus that that beginning of healing shall rest upon this church. And we ask, oh God, that you will cause your peace to rest upon us in the name of Jesus. And oh God, wherever we go, let us show forth Christ in the name of Jesus. We give you praise for this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
join me in the responsive reading. This is from Psalm 22, verses 1 through 5. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? My God, I cry out by day. I cry out by night. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. In you our ancestors put their trust. To you they cried out and were saved. The scripture reading today is from Luke chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, 8 through 11. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to him, and the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness? and go after the one which is lost until he finds it. Or, what woman having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin which I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. For those who have ears, let them hear. I remember my pastor used to say that in college, and I thought that was the silliest thing I've ever heard. For those who have ears, let them hear. What does that mean? 
That means you're about to hear some wisdom and it is incumbent upon you to discipline yourself and pay attention. What I'd like you to do is turn to Luke chapter 14 and go to the final verse in Luke chapter 14 and consider the final phrase. What does Jesus say? Let anyone with ears to hear do what? Listen. And with this phrase, you now enter a treasure of Luke 15. If you're not familiar with scripture, if you don't read the Bible very often, Luke 15 is a mountaintop of Jesus' teaching. But what happened? There were two groups drawing near to Jesus. Tax collectors and sinners gathered to hear Jesus. Pharisees and scribes gathered to grumble. Jewish tax collectors and sinners were despised by their own people. Tax collectors were hired by the government of Rome in order to collect exorbitant taxes on their own people. Who were the sinners? Now we throw that word around a lot. You sinner, you sinner. The sinners were the outcasts. The sinners were not part of the end group. The sinners did not follow the law or they were unwilling or unable to follow the law. The Pharisees and scribes focused on holiness, teaching, meticulously recording the Hebrew scriptures. And if you're a scribe and you have to write down scripture meticulously, you are going to know your Bible. The Pharisees and scribes, in a public manner, ridiculed Jesus. This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. This man, couldn't even say his name, that person, this thing, this man, eats with sinners and breaks bread with them. And Jesus responded to grumbling by telling three different stories in Luke 15. Now friends, these familiar stories are to be read as one long story. And when you do that, there is power and application beyond measure. The first story is a long rhetorical question. Now, why did Jesus use a long rhetorical question? Because he didn't give the grumblers a chance to respond. If you have ears to hear, listen. I am the teacher, Jesus is saying. Your role is to listen. And here's the first long rhetorical question in Luke 15 verses 4 through 7. Which one of you having a hundred sheep and losing one of them does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found this one lost sheep that was lost, and now the sheep is found. What did the sheep do? The sheep went away and traveled to a far country due to its own ignorance and put himself in peril. The sheep is lost and broken. And if you notice, 
The shepherd did not stop until how many sheep? One was found. What percentage of the sheep were saved? 99%. How many were lost? 1%. How did the shepherd respond when finding one lost sheep? He arrived home, called his friends, called his neighbors, called anyone who would want to celebrate and say, come rejoice with me. Why are we celebrating? I have found my sheep that was lost. The second story again, Jesus masterfully communicates one long rhetorical question in chapter 15, verses 8 to 10. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. What percentage of the coins were safe and sound? Oh, do your math. 90%. What percentage was lost? 10%. And you do notice the woman searched diligently. The home had no windows and a dirt floor. She lit a lamp, swept the house, searched carefully until she found that one lost coin. And the woman's reaction to finding a lost coin, what did she do? She called her neighbors. She called her friends. She invites all willing to come to rejoice with me. Why are we celebrating? I have found the coin that was lost at home. Now, beloved, these first two stories set up the crescendo of the third. There was a man who had two sons. Did you notice the flow? The story moves from a lost animal to a lost object to a lost human being. Two sons. How many are lost? A hundred percent. How many are found? None. Human being created in the image God lost. The younger son says, Father, give me the share of the property that belongs to me. The father's response, and this is a key that we miss sometimes. Did he agree to give the younger son an inheritance? Whose inheritance? His inheritance. He didn't get the land, he got the money. What did he do with the elder son? Did he forget him? He gave him the land. For the elder son, he gave him the inheritance. His heirs will now have access to the estate. And this will continue through this older son's Lineage. The younger son gathered up all he had and he went away to a far country and squandered his inheritance on what? The scripture says dissolute living. If you read ahead in this familiar parable, the older son says, you have squandered your life on prostitutes and poor living, wine, women, and song. The scripture never says that. Dissolute living. What does this mean? He was young. 
He went away from home probably for the first time. And he had a lot of cash. And soon found himself broke. Verily, verily, I say unto you, what a surprise. And soon thereafter, there was a severe famine that ravaged the land of the younger son. What happened? Before we start condemning the younger son, we need to understand that this younger son took a chance. This younger son went away and bad choices and bad luck ruined him. Read Luke 15, 15. Let's go there. So the younger son went and what? Hired himself. He was so destitute. He tried to attach, well he did, attach himself to a citizen of this far away country. Basically saying, can I work for you for free? I'm destitute. I have nothing. And the citizen said, go herd and feed the pigs. If you're a Pharisee listening to this, if you are a person of the law, if you're a person that goes by the rules, this younger son is reaping what he sowed you sinner you chose to leave your ignorant decisions led to squandering your inheritance and now you live among the filth because of your own actions if you want to complain younger son look in the mirror the younger son has hit rock bottom. For those of you that read comics, you know what a thought bubble is, right? I see all you nerds out there. Well, you know what a thought bubble is. Let's read a thought bubble. Luke 15, 17 through 19. This is what the younger son, younger son is thinking. Luke 15, verse 17. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am, what? Dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your servants. And the younger son decides to get up and to walk home. And scripture says one day the father is scanning the horizon, which implies this wasn't the first time. Imagine the father longing to see his younger son each day scans the horizon and one day he sees his silhouette walking toward him and the father filled with compassion runs, embraces, and kisses the young son. The young son speaks first. Father, I have sinned against you. I am no longer worthy to be called what? What did the father say to the son? Nothing. Nothing. He completely ignored the son's comment. Why? 
because the Father would communicate love by the actions that will follow. The father does not respond to the younger son. His words are directed to the servant. Not later, not when you're ready, but quickly, now, at this moment, you go get the best robe. You put it on my younger son. You get a ring and place it on his finger. You kill the fatted calf. Let us eat and drink and be merry. Why? For this son of mine was dead and is alive. He was lost and now he's found. The elder son starts walking home from working hard in the fields. What is that noise I hear? What is this music? Well, it's a celebration. Your younger brother has returned home. The elder son responds with anger and refuses to join. The father comes out and pleads with the younger son to come, the elder son to come in. Notice the powerful and heartbreaking verse of Luke 15, 29. We'll read the first phrase of 15, 29. The older elder son says to the father, listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and don't miss this, I have never disobeyed the command, and the elder son spoke the truth. But the elder son had a corrupt view of his relationship with his father. The elder son views the relationship with the father as one of master, servant. Look at all the work I've done. Any task you have assigned to me, I've done it. Verse 29 continues. Yet you have never given me a young goat so that I, I might go out and celebrate with who? My friends. Hmm. Did you catch it? In the previous two stories, friends, neighbors, guests, the community, all are invited to the celebration. I have found my sheep. I have found my coin. The elder son's guest list includes friends at the exclusion of others. The elder son continues in verse 30. The diatribe continues. But when this son of yours came back, he who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted, fatted calf and gave a celebration for him. The elder son never says one word. What is the one word that is omitted? Father. The younger son, even asking for his inheritance, started with father. For the, young, the elder son has such a warped view of trying to please his father, thinking that it is through works he could gain his love when he saw a measure of grace given to another he couldn't handle it. This son of yours. Mm. All right, let's read the conclusion of the third story in Luke 15, verses 31 and 32. 15, 31 and 32. 
Then the father said to him, son, you are always with me and all of that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because his brother, this brother of yours, was dead and has come to life. He was lost and now he is found. And the story ends. The conclusion is up to your imagination. Can you imagine the look on the religious folks' faces when they realize throughout these stories they, the Pharisees and the scribes, not the tax collectors and sinners, are the elder son did you catch it reading all three stories as one one sheep was lost by going away to a far country and when found and returned to the fold a hundred percent were saved the coin was lost where at home and when found, an open invitation to celebrate, a hundred percent are found. The younger son was lost like the sheep by going away. And when found, there was an open invitation to celebrate. Fifty percent are found. The elder son, like the coin, was lost at home and story the story ends before discovering the outcome there had to be uncomfortable silence oh to see the body language of Jesus and the sinners on one side and the Pharisees and scribes on the other the story of the elder son that ends open ended. So in light of these three stories, how are we to live then? Dear one, Luke, dear ones, Luke 15 is a warning to us to stop. In your gut, you know when you're going down the wrong road. And when you're going down the wrong road, friends, the best thing is for you to stop and reassess and reevaluate and reconsider. And it is a time to pause and reflect when your primary response to anyone or anything is pointing fingers and grumbling. Learn to stop before going down that dark road of religious elitism that only hurts yourself, of excluding others, refusing to break bread and fellowship with fellow believers because of their social background or political beliefs. You are in danger of becoming an elder son when you are more concerned about being a gatekeeper than being like Jesus and opening that gate and welcoming all the outcasts, the sinners. Now this may come as a complete shock to you and we may have to edit this from the sermon. But did you know sometimes your pastor gets in a bad mood? Carla, can you believe that? See, Carla doesn't believe it. Jerry, did you know your pastor sometimes grumbles? Mm-mm. When I do my own self-assessment and I start grumbling, griping about everything, do you know what time it is? It is time for me to act like a sinner and draw near to Jesus and not grumble, but to what? Listen and hear 
Beloved, the gospel according to Luke, as we've said the past few weeks, is a treasure beyond measure. It is a discipleship guide to put you on that blessed narrow way. To read and to implement and apply the lessons in the gospel according to Luke. Beloved, when you draw near to Jesus, your grumbling will decrease and your joy and celebration will increase as you, and yeah, I'm going to say it, as you, as a follower of Jesus, gathered in community, you eat, you drink, and you be merry. And you welcome with joy those that are lost and that are found. And whatever their background, and I'll say it again, whatever their politics in this day of division, it means scubala. It means nothing. Sorry, scubala was a Paul curse word. You can blame it on Paul. <laughs> you know, I got to tell you, even as a Christian, sometimes I forget these three words. And maybe you need to hear them today. God loves you. God desires a relationship with you through his son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for you. And a word of warning, if you're here or watching online, if you have not accepted Jesus as your savior, Luke 15 teaches, God will find you by any means necessary if you seek him. Repent and believe in the gospel. He will leave the 100 and go after the one. He will light a lamp in the darkness, sweep and search until you are found. God welcomes you back home with celebration even if you condemn him to his face and you go out in a far country and you lose everything. Beloved, you can come back home. Therefore, followers of Jesus Christ, reject the spirit of the elder son. Your relationship with God is not built on your own good works and labor. You are saved by grace through faith and the work that you do, the labor at, that you do, you do it as unto the Lord. One thing I love about third is that we will continue to embrace with holy stubbornness a Luke 15 culture. That in these days of political and social division, this is our Luke 15 message. All are invited to the party. All are welcomed home. All are invited to the table, and when what was lost is found, we will respond with celebration and joy. Where they're lost by going far away or lost at home, earnestly Tenderly, Jesus is called. Ye who are weary, say it again, come home. And all God's people said with hope. Amen. Dear ones, let us stand and sing the beauty of the hymn of invitation and dedication. If you are interested in giving your life to Jesus, I invite you to come forward or drop me a note for those of you that are watching on social media. If you would like to join this beloved community, this wonderful church, walk the aisle, and it'd be my honor to introduce you to your new church family. So let us stand.
and let us sing with joy. But if you'd be seated just for a moment, I'm going to walk over here to Chris Lee. Chris Lee, that was one of the most beautiful welcomes I've ever heard. I just want to say bless you, brother. <laughs> Vanessa Gibson, is, is your grandma high, Serenity? All right. Now, is it going to hurt your back to stand up? You want me to hold Friends, this is Vanessa Gibson. She's been visiting for a while and has decided to join our church family. So what is your response to that? Can I pick you up? This is granddaughter Serenity. Say hi, Serenity. Say hi to everybody. Serenity, we are happy to have you here, too. I want you to stand in line with Grandma and let our folks come by and welcome you. Vanessa, as I told you, I know you've had to go through some difficult roads in life, but you're home here. You come and be who you are and relax, let people love you and care for you, and we'll pray for you. You got the all-church email. This is a dear soul that is dealing with a good case of diverticulitis. And she would like prayer. 
So raise your hand if you're going to pray before your day is out. All right. If you don't, if you don't feel better, you blame me. All right. <laughs> Have a seat, everyone. All right. Please hear these words of benediction. Beloved, be anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God will guard your hearts and minds on Christ Jesus, our Lord. And remember, there is always a way home. And all God's people said with joy,